So this this is a garden in the farm, and you'll see how it looked before and what how it looks now. This is how it looks now, and I'll explain to you how I see permaculture. I mean, I'm sure you can study permaculture in different places, but my um, edge is a bit a bit different. So let's see. Okay. So this is the presentation outlines. Um, you're going to understand what permaculture is, uh, the way I see permaculture, why I think permaculture is the future, um, what are we actually doing in the farm and how it relates to this presentation, and fourth of all, um, we're going to show the course we're going to start in August. So I'm doing this lecture here on the kibbutz, and I also grew up on a kibbutz. And I think there's a lot of uh, connections between a kibbutz and permaculture. For me, permaculture is about um, using limita limited uh, resources and being able to actually uh, make a living off them. I think this is what they did in the early times of the kibbutz. Elaine could probably tell you about this, where they had to uh, succeed with limited resources. They had problems with water. It was very hard to grow stuff here. Um, Problems with budgets, probably, and all different kinds of problems. And they succeeded. If you look at Torah today, it's amazing. If you go back to the 70s, Torah was like... We didn't have toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we had water mains that blew up all the time, and we had to patch them with all kinds of strange things. Mm -hmm. And the money used to run out about the end of the second week of each month. No. <laughs> what did you use instead of toilet paper? <laughs> well, uh, there were several large dailies in the newspaper department. <laughs> That's permaculture. <laughs> By the way, the inventor of permaculture, Bill Mollison, uses newspapers to mulch his, um, his beds, yeah. Like raising beds, because he says that's what you have to do with it. I don't know why I ask him. This is the guy that invented um, permaculture. And as you can see, it doesn't say philosophy, it says, it says a designer manual. You know why it says a designer manu manual and not a like a philosophy or a theory? It's practical. It's very practical. People are realizing today we live in a, we're living in a place where resources are becoming more and more and more limited, right? Back then we thought we have all the oil in the world and all the food in the world and we'll be fine. But we found out it's not like that. Um, so... <laughs> What Bill Mollison here is, did here is that he wrote a book that is supposed to be a design manual to actually uh, conserve resources. In order for you to understand how to conserve resources, you have to understand why resources are limited. Does anyone know why resources are limited? Or think he knows, think he knows why? Why do you think resources are limited? It's a closed cycle. What? It's a closed cycle. What do you mean? Um, 